inside a boxcar like this one here this was the kind they had and uh, there were hundreds of people men women children all gathered together crammed inside with uh, whatever food we happened to have in our pockets when we left a little water and uh, not enough room for people to lie down mostly uh, we had to stand crammed in there when we arrived at Auschwitz, after three days, this was the front of the camp, and the train pulled up on the track to the side in here. The doors slid open, and it was a scene of madness, like a nightmare. People rushing, shouting, screaming, and the guards yelling, hurry, 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 and uh, families screaming for loved ones to stay together with each other, and uh, mothers trying to help their children, the soldiers with their uh, rifles and sticks, that they used to beat people. And in the middle of this scene, my mother gave me a pillow. She said to me, here, my son, be sure not to sit on the cold, bare ground. We were in Auschwitz, and she was worried I might get a chill. But we all know how mothers are, don't we? <laughs> yes. Mr. Mermelstein has a few more minutes. Are there any more questions? Mr. Milstein? Yes, young man. How old were you when this happened? I was not much older than you. I was 17. My father says there never was a Holocaust. That it was all a bunch of lies. And that there were never any Jews gassed at Auschwitz. Yes, I've uh, heard this... Uh, this idea before, and I suppose uh, it's the kind of thing that Hitler would say if he was back on Earth. I think the question is, would you believe him? What? Miss Radford, my counselor, she says I got a good shot at getting into Stanford if I do well on my SAT. Oh, great. The chicken is cold. What's good. the if? All you have to do is apply yourself. I do apply myself. That's why I stand a good chance of getting in. Mm -hmm. He made the Herald. Oh. What, uh -huh. what is that? What they is printed it? my letter. Look at it. What can one we'll say? say when once, once again, again we, we sit idly by, by. As these highly acclaimed professors and highly accredited universities are at it again. They are teaching our new generations that the chimneys of Auschwitz were only those of the bakeries. <laughs> Good work, Dad. Thank you. You're an author. See that? All right. Yeah. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Dad. Something I wanted to get off my chest about these animals trying to make people believe there was no such thing as a holocaust sprouting up every place, even the school where I spoke. You remember, Edie? Dad, that's a cholesterol injection. I'm caught in the act. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Please forgive me. And you finish your supper. You don't know how lucky well, you, you are. You are half That's right. Yeah, yeah, Mel, no, this is pretty strong. Calling them former Nazis of the old Hitlerite regime? 
I said some of them. The others aren't, but they're not any better, believe me. Spreading lies, hatred, bigotry vis-a-vis -vis the subject known as the Holocaust. Yeah. I sent it to the Jerusalem Post and uh, a couple of other local papers. What do you think? Is it a good letter? Do I get an A? Yeah, it's fine. It is. It's fine. No. What is it? Dear Mr. Mermelstein, your recent letter in the Jerusalem Post indicates that you can prove that Jews were gassed in gas chambers at Auschwitz. In 1979, the Revisionist Convention, we announced a $50,000 reward for proof of this allegation. To date, no one has stepped forward. And at the 1980 Revisionist Convention, we suspended the reward. In the circumstances, we, we will, will reopen, reopen the $50,000 reward so that you can apply. I enclose all the necessary application forms. Uh, please note the uh, evidence will be judged along the same standards as evidence in a U.S. criminal court and not the standards of the Nuremberg trials. If we do not hear from you, we will be obliged to draw our own conclusions and publicize this fact to the mass media, including the Jerusalem Post. I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Sincerely, Lewis Brandon, Institute for Historical Review. Anti-Defamation League, 105. Of course you want to strike back at these people. What decent person wouldn't? So you will help? I'm afraid there's no help we can give you. There's no way for you to get satisfaction, Mr. Mermelstein. Satisfaction? What I want is justice. I mean legal satisfaction. This letter is not actionable, which means there are no grounds to take them into court. Of course, uh, I mean a real court, a United States court, not their kangaroo court. Mr. Mermelstein, the ADL cannot become involved with this. It's counterproductive. Mr. Mermelstein? Oh, Rabbi Hire, we'll see you now. Mr. Mermelstein, this is my associate, Rabbi Cooper. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Mermelstein. No. Well, no. Please sit. We're, we're happy to have the chance to get to know you. Thank you. I'm sorry that it's on the occasion of a problem. Yes, sir. We're aware of the talks you give, Mel. And your impact on school children must be very rewarding. It is. It is. It must have been a shock for you, getting a letter like this. Is this the first time you ever heard from them? Yes, the first. Well, we see this kind of tactic all the time. Baiting. Baiting. It must be very difficult for you personally. Yes. But why give them the attention? This is not justice. This is what they want. A show trial on their turf. Another chance for them to attack the validity of the Holocaust. This letter was sent to me personally and is disgusting. Now I'm asking you for advice. What should I do? No. You're a survivor of Auschwitz. We're not. We don't have the moral right to tell you what to do. You have to follow the dictates of your conscience. But please remember, if you take this on, if you get into a fight with these people and you lose, we all lose. It's a nice street, huh? Yes, it is. This is some country. I was a teenager when I got off the boat. And I was shaking from typhus, and I was dressed in rags. Look at this. You worked hard. Yeah. I was also lucky. I found you. Now <laughs> <laughs> well, that cuts both ways, fella. You got turned down today, didn't you? Yeah. By every lawyer, every organization I contacted, and they all said the same thing. Forget it. 
Ignore them. How can I let that scum laugh at me? Advertise the Jew back down. They'd show up at my talks, you know. They'd wave their hands. You the Mel Mermelstein who refused to accept our challenge? Now, what can I say to them, Jane? I can't let them shut me up, Jane. I have a responsibility. Mel, do you remember Bill Cox? Yeah, when the two of you ran for the school board. Interesting man. Yeah, he's a lawyer, you know. Yeah, so? You should give him a call. You serious? Why not? We're talking about the same Bill Cox. He's a former cop, former assistant district attorney, yeah. night school lawyer. Yeah, and you forgot Irish Catholic. <laughs> That's perfect, perfect. This was exactly the guy for my case. Stranger things have happened. I mean, look, you married a Southern Baptist teacher from Tennessee, and it's worked out all right, hasn't it? <laughs> so, this was when you ran for the, uh, the school board? No, that's, uh, when I ran for president of the United States. Oh. Very ambitious? Yeah. Uh, don't worry about that. I, I was trying to teach my son about the democratic process. What better way than watching his father run for president? <laughs> it was certainly original. All I did was make sure my kids took civics. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, tell me, what do you think about my case? Well, they sound like uh, the kind of people I used to run into when I was a cop. People who knock on the doors of blacks in the middle of the night, and order them to come out. Yes, but what can I do about it? Well, I'll tell you what you can't do about it. You can't uh, let them trick you into going into their phony court. So I've been told. Mm -hmm. But I will not accept this insulting letter. Exposure to the mass media, if you don't respond, very soon. They're insulting me. They're, they're threatening me. Well, I know that, but... Uh, but? Well, Mel, I agree with everything you're saying. It is insulting. It's threatening. It's disgusting, if you want to know what I think. But I'm afraid it's uh, non -action. Sorry, I... Don't be sorry, Jane. I have to apologize. I just have to find a lawyer with a different opinion. Huh. What the hell is that? It's after midnight. All right. All right. Bill, be careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming. Cox! Are you a gambling man, Mr. Mermelstein? What are you talking about? It's the middle of the night. Can I come in? Come in, come in. You play cards? You want to play gin? What is this? Are you crazy? Where I come from, Lubbock, Texas, we play hold'em poker. Now, I have a feeling if we play our cards right, we might just be able to take these IHR boys to the Mr. clean. Cox? What, what are you doing? Hi, Mrs. Marmelstein. Look who's here. What is it? That's Adams. Adams versus Litzel. Is this supposed to tell me something? Adams versus... That's the first case we learn about in law school. If somebody sends you a letter making an offer and you accept that offer, that's a legal contract. Yes. That means if you accept a challenge from the IHR, if you send them a letter saying, yes, I agree, et cetera, et cetera, you get a legal binding contract. If they don't live up to it, then we can sue them for breach, but in a United States court of law where you get a fair hearing. You sure this isn't... A Texas lawyer no, talking no, about No, 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 no. This is good from sea to shining sea. You send that letter of agreement, and if they don't respond within 30 days, we'll drag their butts into a real court. See how they like that. This is interesting. This is very interesting. But suppose they do respond. Doesn't that put me right back into their court? You and everybody else told me I shouldn't do that. That's where the gamble comes in. But I don't think they want to hear from you. I think they want to just ridicule you. I think they want to tell people they made you an offer and you ducked it. Very reasonable. But what if they do take me up on it? They won't. Trust me, they won't. And that'll be the biggest mistake they ever made. How can you be so sure? Because we're the good guys and they're, uh, they're the bad guys. Mm. 
All that says is you're accepting their challenge with proof that the Holocaust actually Thank happened. You. Thank you. Now, if we don't hear, uh, hear from them within 30 days, we've got them in court. Let's get that in the mail and make it official. OK. Now, it's just one thing. Yeah. We haven't talked about your fee. Don't you oh, yeah. We should make an arrangement. Yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about that, Mel. And uh, I think I'm going to have to take this, this case pro bono. I'm sorry. In English, please. Oh, that's um, for the public good. That means that my services are free. No, no, no. I can't, no, no, no. Can't Listen, take... you're going you're gonna to have enough expenses. Well, me. all right, but you can't no, take that's, the... that's the deal. Okay. 30 days and counting, huh? Yeah. So tell me, when you played hold'em poker, did you bluff a lot? Oh, I bluffed all the time. Yeah. Famous for bluffing. How often did you win? Never won. That's probably why it's famous. So you want to know why I make speeches all the time? Sure. Maybe it's time we should talk about it. A few days after they took us to Auschwitz, my brother Laos, your uncle, he and I, uh, we already got our tattoos with the numbers here, see? And uh, we went looking for our father because we wanted him to have our numbers because if he got separated, the number was the best identification. You understand what I'm talking about? We found my father. And already from the work, from the torment, he looked 10 years older. And he said, this is a place of death. He told us he saw a flaming pit where they were burning bodies. He asked us to make him a promise. Promise? Yeah. We can't talk about this now. Some other time, okay, Kenny? Some other time. Hello? Rise and shine, Coxie. Mel, what is it? You know what today is. <sighs> Give me a break, will you? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. It's 30 days, and I got no answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, come on over to the office. See you there. Okay. 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 We got him now. You can take the kangaroo court and stick it. You're gonna take him to a United States court of law. Mazel Bill. Mazel Tov, Mel. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do. Let me show you this day-by-day uh, -day battle plan. This is where we are right now. Now we're going to prepare an amended complaint and then we'll hit them with the motion of summary judgment. Then we'll hit them so hard and so fast they won't have time to figure out what we're doing. Interrogatories, depositions, statements of witnesses, causes of action, documented evidence. Because they're thugs, they'll keep defaulting. We'll set default hearings. We're going to hit them with the law, Mel. What the hell is this? This is what you find when you look under rocks. I'm afraid the IHR is not a small, isolated bunch of fanatics. Ay, 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 Anne Frank, a hoax. Where did you get this garbage? Seems they're connected with the well-funded empire of hate spread out all over the country. They have publishing houses, newspapers. They even had radio and television programs. Where did you find this? That's in the public record. The point is, Mel, this might be just the tip of the iceberg. I don't know how much money they're willing to pour into this case. It's, uh, this could get very expensive. Bill, let me tell you something. They're going to do whatever they have to do, and I'm going to do whatever I have to do, whatever it takes. 
I can't let them frighten me. These are liars and bullies. We're gonna find out they picked the wrong guy. Well, I guess we're all here. Uh, we're all ready. May we go on record, Mr. Cox? Yeah, sure. Has your attorney uh, explained to you, Mr. Mermelstein, that in a deposition you are under oath? Of course. Just as though you were in court. Of course. Now, Mr. Mermelstein, you claim that in 1944, you and your family, your father, your mother, your brother, and two sisters were rounded up together with others from your village. You were placed in boxcars and transported to the camp known as Auschwitz-Birkenau. Is that correct? That's correct. Mr. Mermelstein, do you believe that uh, you have entered into contract with the defendants, with my clients, the Institute for Historical Review? Yes, sure do. And how did they initiate it? By sending me a letter stating that they had a $50,000 reward for anybody who could prove that Jews were gassed at Auschwitz, so that you, meaning me, Mel Mermelstein, specifically, could apply. So you filled out the application and you took up the challenge? That's correct. And you believe that you can fully comply with the requirements of proof? Yes. You can prove... I don't care about your money. I care about the memory of people who died. Yes. You can prove very easily that there were gassings. Is that right? My father and my brother were worked to death. And I can prove to you that my mother and my sisters were gassed at Auschwitz-Birkenau. I saw them going in the gas chamber but I didn't see them coming out. So the only people you ever saw gassed were your mother and sisters. My grandfathers, my aunts, my uncles. You mean your entire family was with you? My immediate family all arrived in the same boxcar, and my ears are still to this day hurting from the cries of men, women, little children crying for help, babies carried by their mothers. That's how we arrived. And my mother and my sisters were gassed the day after. And that seemed like they wanted to exterminate you? Not seen. You're looking at the sole survivor of my entire family. This is not a laughing matter. Well, I did not mean to be facetious, but you were not getting lox and cream cheese. Wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. I'm going to ask my client to walk right out of here if the tenor of this deposition continues. What tenor are you talking about? Now, I want the record to reflect that Mr. Fusilier was laughing about some of these questions. Oh, please. I think Mr. Mermelstein understands that I am not laughing. Now, what took place in those death camps is a very serious matter to Mr. Mermelstein and to millions of others. We were not there. And it is not that serious. We are not in mourning here, and I have not laughed. Mr. Mermelstein, do you think that I am laughing at you? You have been laughing. Was there a back door? There was a... Uh, front door and a, and a back door, yes. So you watch your mother and sisters enter. And you're watching the back door. And they never come out. Could you see the back door? No. Was there a stairway coming out in the back? No. There was no back door there? No. But you just said you watched the back. Was that a wrong expression you used? Do you know whether or not bodies can be burned in pits? Sure. Do you know how long it takes to burn a body? No. Do you know whether or not Himmler gave orders concerning corporal punishment of inmates? No. Now you're answering the questions correctly, Mr. Mermelstein. Do you know the location, the conclusion by the German Auschwitz trial of any of the crematories one through four? Other than what you have said about your mother and two sisters, do you know the name of any person that was gassed within the confines of any German concentration camp? You do not know any other names? Many other names. The question was asked, answered three hours ago. Do you know the names and addresses? of any other witnesses. Can I do one more time? No, you're gonna mess it up again. Oh, please, I won't mess it up. Oh, yeah, you will. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you will. Hey, Edie. Mel. Papa. Are you all right? Yeah, I 
was it? <coughs> get, get your father a glass of water. <coughs> what is it, man? I'm huh? having trouble with my voice. <coughs> you should sit down, dude. Yeah, all right. I'll do it. Yeah. Well, what, what happened? <coughs> Was it so terrible? Oh. Uh, i tell you something. They could all be right. I could make a mistake. Cox could make a mistake. The judge could say anything. Mel. I realized today, while I was answering the questions, we could lose. We could lose. We could lose the case. Can we please just get one picture of your family? Please. Thank you. We will now proceed with the case of Myrtle Steen versus the Institute for Historical Review. Please state your appearances. William Cox, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Mel Myrmelstein. Richard Fusilier for defendants, the Institute for Historical Review. <laughs> The court has before it this morning a number of motions. The court has read and considered all the documents that you all have submitted with regard to those motions. Now let us proceed. I will be interested in hearing argument from you all with respect to the plaintiff's request that judicial notice be taken of the fact that Jews were gassed to death in Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland in the summer of 1944. I would like to hear argument with respect to evidence code 451H, 451F, among other points. Now, another fact that I think that should be considered at this point is that whether the request for the taking of judicial notice is a fact that is truly relevant to the central dispute. Do you wish to be heard on your request for judicial notice? Yes, Your Honor, I do. This is um, precisely the kind of case where it is incumbent upon the court to take judicial notice. Your Honor, uh, this is not simply a case of breach of contract. There's, there's, there's more here than that, much more. Uh, since World War II, in every trial concerning this matter, um, Nuremberg trial, the, uh, the Auschwitz trial, the trial of Adolf Eichmann in Israel, never once was there a denial of the fact that there was an extermination program and the Jews were gassed at Auschwitz. We say that the IHR, the defendant here, has taken a fact of history and twisted it so as to create a great lie. We say that we are here today because this is a matter of grave concern, not only to Mr. Mermelstein, but to the thousands of survivors, to the people of this community. This is a matter of recognizing history. Pardon me. <laughs> what history says and what the facts are may not be the same. Napoleon said, what is history but a fable agreed upon? What is at issue here in this dispute? The crux of the situation is my clients the defendant wanted somebody to offer proof. The issue is, whether Mr. Mermelstein can prove what he claims to be true. The dispute is whether there was a holocaust. If Jews were gassed at Auschwitz is what must be proved. And it has certainly not been proved in this courtroom up to this point. Your Honor, we have here someone who has tried very hard to deal with this. He has tried as best he could to deal with this in a psychologically healthy way, and in fact, he has done that. He has built a small, successful business. He has married. He has had children. He's done well in life. And then along comes this steamroller and says, no, 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 no. Your, your mother and your two sisters did not die. Your father and your brother they're probably all living in Russia somewhere, according to Mr. Brandon, or under assumed names in, in Israel. Well, Your Honor, if it's true that those people did escape, where, where are the children? 
a whole generation. Where are the babies? Where are the babies? They were put to death. I object. Excuse me, Your Honor. The contract calls for Mr. Mermelstein to prove that the Holocaust took place. I don't see Your Honor, what occurs the here will be widely seen, widely reported, and will have a serious effect on millions of people. There's more at stake here than Mr. Fusilier and his, his client's contract. Objection is overruled. Your Honor, uh, I'd like the uh, court's permission to have Mr. Mermelstein take the stand. Well. Raise your right hand. You saw when you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please state your name. Mel Mermelstein. Mr. Mermelstein, um, you have a, a museum at your place of work, don't you? Yes, that's correct. Could you describe it to us, please? It's an exhibit um, of the Holocaust. I have artifacts, uh, mementos from the camps and such. Concentration camps. Yes, correct. And at various times, um, you have spoken to groups of people on the subject of the Holocaust. Is that correct? Yes. To schools, civic groups, whoever will listen. Well, this this museum and these um, these speeches that you give. What what what's that all about? Why why do you do that? Mr. Mermelstein, why do you choose to make speeches about something that happened almost 40 years ago? Why do you continue to do that? So that people will never forget what we've done to each other, what the human race is capable of, and because I made a promise. Promise? What promise? In Auschwitz, it was a promise that I made to my father. I remember his words before he died, before my brother died, he said to us, promise me this, promise that if either of you lives through this inferno, you'll be a witness to the world about what went on here. And I made him that promise. My brother and I, we both promised. I'm the only one who lived, so I keep it. Your Honor, I, I have no more questions. Under evidence code section 452H, this court responding to the overwhelming amount of documentary evidence, testimony of witnesses, victims, even guards at the concentration camps, the scholarship of historians of unquestioned authority, as well as the eyewitness evidence provided by Mr. Mermelstein here today, this court does take judicial notice of the fact that Jews were gassed to death at Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland, and that the Holocaust is not reasonably subject to dispute, and it is capable of immediate and accurate determination by resort to sources of reasonably indisputable accuracy. It is simply a fact. As a result of Mermelstein versus Institute for Historical Review, the Holocaust became a recognized fact in the United States court for the first time. The Institute subsequently made a financial settlement and signed a letter of apology to Mel Mermelstein and other survivors of the Holocaust. However, despite the court ruling and settlement, the Institute maintains that there were no homicidal gas chambers at Auschwitz. Around the world, other individuals and groups still preach the lie that the Holocaust never took place. 
the fight against racism, hate, and prejudice continues.